So, folks, my goodness, it continues. Donald Trump continues to launch threats at the judge in his new case, the one in D.C., Judge Tanya Chutkan. He continues to make those threats. And this is different from yesterday. There are brand new threats today, this Sunday morning, that he made on his stupid little true social site that are nonetheless going to get him into more trouble. And we're going to break that down, but it's connected to the move by Chutkan yesterday to not only allow a new challenge into Donald Trump's ability to speak about the case, but also deny Donald Trump's attempt to delay that discussion for like a few days, saying, no, you have until Monday and I'm slamming my foot down. So in response, Donald Trump is lashing out and threatening the judge. It's scary stuff, but hit the like and subscribe button as we track this monster's efforts to try and have this judge taken out because he can't handle actual justice. Now let's break some of this down because the reason Donald Trump is doing this fundamentally is that he's a fascist thug, but he's afraid of this judge and how tough she is. I want to get your thoughts, Anthony, specifically about the special counsel here, because in the in the special yeah. counsel's request, they cite how Trump has, quote, previously issued public statements on social media witnesses uh, on social media about witnesses, judges, attorneys and others associated with legal matters pending against him. So it seems to go without saying that this motion was necessary from the DOJ's perspective very early on. It was absolutely necessary, Amen. And they moved um, with the speed that we have all come to expect from Jack Smith. To Cynthia's point, right now we have, on the one hand, a very aggressive uh, prosecutor in Jack Smith. The DOJ would say we pursue justice without fear or favor. He is absolutely doing that. And importantly, he is uh, in that independent. He is not um, some left-wing ideologue that Donald Trump is trying to make him out to be. Now, to the second point, uh, Judge Chuckin, she is well known in legal circles as someone who is fair to all sides, but she also has a reputation for being tough. Uh, I would note, Eamon, I, I think um, I've seen some uh, commentary from you, perhaps, that earlier in some of her January 6th cases, she sentenced defendants who were found guilty in her courtroom to even more time than the government requested. So just Chuck it. She, she is the real deal. She right. has a reputation for having fidelity to the rule of law, and she's not going to be afraid of Donald Trump. See what it says there, right? Trump's a bit trapped. On the one hand, he's got a hard-nosed prosecutor. And on the other, he's got a judge that will be fair. I have no doubt that she's going to be fair to Donald Trump. I have no doubt in my mind that she will be fair. I really believe that. But fair to Donald Trump is going to seem as unfair in Trump's mind because Trump has never been treated fairly in his entire life. By that, I mean Donald Trump has always been given preferential treatment seemingly everywhere in the courts, in the business world, in politics, in his personal life, everywhere. So if a judge finally puts her foot down, especially a judge who is a woman of color, who Donald Trump will feel fundamentally disrespected by if she wants to be treated as his equal... It's going to get really, really ugly for Trump. And this is why everything is going down. And this is why he's in big trouble here. A lot of people are noting that his threats against Chutkan, which will break down, are getting him in massive trouble. He's going to have to be mindful of it. It's going to be really tough for his lawyers to make him mindful of it. Well, yeah, I mean, because you, you, you worked in the Trump White House. I mean, this is the kind of uh, activity, behavior on his part that I would imagine uh, makes uh, Trump lawyers, uh, you know, reconsider what they're doing with their lives, I suppose. It's got to be Look, pretty maddening. These folks have a tough job, right? He's running for president. He's always been a person who kind of just, you know, it's stream of consciousness. He says what he wants to say, doesn't always, you know, it's not scripted in, in any way, shape or form. That becomes really hard for a lawyer who's trying to prepare a defense in a number of criminal actions. You know, Donald Trump has previously called Smith deranged. He was doing this last night at a rally in Alabama. He's called federal investigators thugs. Um, he's repeatedly de denounced the prosecutors in, in these cases against him. Um, is it time for the judge to warn Trump to knock it off or else? 
making you know making comments about the special prosecutor, make, making comments about the agents involved in the case. Um, generally speaking, is something the judge is going to look at closely every time he does it. So the more he does it, the more he's going to open himself to more and more scrutiny and be subject to perhaps sanctions and other things that, you know, it, it, inside of this case that could cause him some real trouble. And the judge was very clear in that in that in, in her initial uh, hearing that, you know, it's a crime to intimidate witnesses, bribe witnesses, say thing, make threats against witnesses, that that's a crime. And she warned them specifically of those issues. Right. And I, I guess that that uh, brings me back, I, I suppose, to the original question that I had, which is I, for Trump to do this 24 hours after he was arraigned, it clearly appears to be. I mean, they're going to say, well, he didn't say specifically anybody, anything about anybody involved in this case. But the inference is there. Um, does the judge at this point have what she needs to essentially put some guardrails on Trump and say, no more social media posts, you're done. There's no way she's there. She's going to say that there are no more social media posts by someone running for public office, let alone president of the United States. There's well, just no way case, judge is about do these that. cases. She, she has a reputation for being very thoughtful in terms of being a judge, and she's going to have to keep those guardrails on as it relates to witnesses. And you know, it's it's true, right? These are the things that are going to risk him going to jail before trial even. And if anything, make the judge make decisions that will make it harder for Donald Trump to make his defense. Right. And it's the sort of conduct that we don't even have a jury yet that will potentially threaten jurors. But it's the sort of conduct that if jurors get a sense of it, will automatically give the jurors reason to not trust Donald Trump and his legal team. Because it's like, why is an innocent man acting like this? Why is Donald Trump so unhinged? They're, he's doing everything he can to demonstrate his guilt. And you don't have to feel bad for Trump lawyers, but some people are starting to feel bad for them because they can't control Donald Trump. And it seems Donald Trump cannot control Donald Trump, which is why Chutkan is getting these threats. Look at how this ex-president was held to account and maybe, just maybe, think twice about trying to overturn an election. Joining me now to discuss this is my Saturday night panel, Anthony Coley, MSNBC Justice and Legal Affairs Analyst. He's also a former director of the Office of Public Affairs and former senior advisor to Attorney General Merrick Garland. Cynthia Altsny is an MSNBC legal analyst and a former federal prosecutor. And Olivia Troy, former Homeland Security and counterterrorism advisor to Vice President Mike Pence. It's great to have all three of you with us. Uh, Cynthia, I'll start with you. I mean, there were already reports this week about how Judge Chutkin would likely move this case through very quickly. Um, and I think we just got a glimpse of that today with her swift response appearing to prove that point. Do you think her moves today set the tone for how she plans to see this case throughout? And, and what do you make of how today's string of legal news unraveled quite rapidly, I would argue? Right. And continues to unravel because the president, uh, the former president continues to tweet in violation of her order which you know, I feel sorry for the lawyers because they obviously have no control over their client. He is either completely deranged because a woman of color is telling him what to do, or he's purposely trying to um, push her to do something um, that he can raise money on down the road. I mean, it's shocking that he was told not to retaliate against a witness, and that's exactly what he's done on the Pence tweet. And he was told not to interfere. And that's exactly what the, the threats that he's made are, are doing. And when she when she says, you, we expect a report by Monday, and his lawyers say, I'm sorry, we don't think that makes sense. We want more time. But then they have time to go on five television shows tomorrow morning. That's going to do nothing but enrage her. The one thing that the judge has absolute control over is his cal her calendar and when that trial date is. And the one thing Trump really wants is to delay the trial. And what he's going to find out is this trial is not going to be delayed. She is going to push it and push it very hard uh, to be done before the election. Uh, you bring up a really important point, and we'll dig into it a little bit about the lawyers for Trump here. But let me just ask you really quickly, as Cynthia, to explain to us, to myself and viewers, uh, the difference between a protective order, which is what the special counsel is actually asking for here, and not a 
Again, like, you know, you do not have to feel bad for Trump lawyers. You don't. Ever. People have worked with this man for decades. Um, you know, they've known what they've gotten into. The best case scenario is they don't get paid, but many of them, like Michael Cohen and stuff, have ended up in jail. And now if you're working for Donald Trump, if you're working for him now, you know what you're getting into. So no sympathy, but on the one hand, on the other hand, excuse me, you know, you 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 can't understand you're 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 Trump's attorney. You're doing your best to defend a undefendable client in a case where the facts are dead set against you, but you have to do the best you can. That's your job as a lawyer. Um, and then you hear him on the TV or hear him on social media or read what he's writing. And it's not only something that's going to make your job harder, but that fundamentally risks him going to prison. And now instead of spending your legal resources on actually preparing the defense for the case itself, you have to spend emergency resources arguing against Donald Trump losing his fundamental rights in a case because of how he acted like a criminal even before conviction. And we don't have to talk about this being purely theoretical. Okay, we're going to get to the threats he made against Chutkan, but I want to play you a new reaction to the threats he's been making. Let me ask you about the arraignment on Thursday. Um, what did you think? And did it give you any more faith in our justice system? Because you and I have talked about this a lot of times, and I know there were moments when you told me that you weren't very confident that Trump was going to be held accountable. I wasn't confident that we would get to that point until we got to that point, yeah. um, until I heard that the indictment had come down and, and really until um, Trump was arraigned. But, I mean, for me, it's... It doesn't answer the question um, that I, you know, ask myself time and time again throughout my career. You know, is it true that no one is above the law? Um, but at least in this case, I recognize the fact that there were uh, some other individuals besides myself who felt that way and were willing to put their careers, careers and their personal safety on the line and pursue an indictment. So for that, I'm, uh, you know, very grateful for for Jack Smith and his team. You got a little more confidence? <laughs> I mean, I've got a little more confidence in a few individuals. From one of the people who Trump nearly had murdered. So that's phenomenal. He's one of the, one of the officers on J6. And so when you bring him in for a bunch of reasons, he's got great insight, but he is a reminder that Donald Trump's danger is not merely philosophical. It's not merely, oh, Donald Trump is a danger to law and order, or Donald Trump is a danger to democracy, or Donald Trump is a danger to freedoms and the Constitution. He is to all of that, of course, and I don't want to downplay that, but he's a literal physical danger to the, the, to the bones and bodies and brains of regular Americans, and indeed judges and juries and witnesses and prosecutors who come between him and, 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 and whatever his goal is. This is real stuff. And so when Donald Trump puts out the following, he wants to see what happened to Fanon happen to Chutkan. And it says here, former President Donald Trump is going after the presiding judge in his latest criminal case, arguing that there is no way he can get a fair trial with her on the bench. In an all-caps post on True Social Sunday morning, the former president seethed about the assignment of Jania Judge Tanya Chutkan to his case and said he plans to ask for her recusal as well as a change of venue from Washington, D.C. There's no way I can get a fair trial with the judge assigned to this ridiculous freedom of speech slash fair elections case, Trump said. Everybody knows this, and so does she. she. We will be immediately asking for a recusal of this judge on the very powerful grounds and likewise for venue change out of D.C. Now you can say, oh, Donald Trump's just following the legal path here. But when that gets rejected... Donald Trump saying there's no way I can get a fair trial. And remember, we saw Matt Gates last night saying we ride or, what is it guys? You watch that video, die for Trump. So if Trump can't get a fair trial from this judge and she's not going to recuse, what's the only way he can get a fair trial? If this judge is removed by some way, Donald Trump knows exactly what he's doing when he attacks this judge and it's threatening her life.